Hey guys, it's uh, Tark with Cycling FPV. Today is September 17th, 2019. It's about 9.30 in the morning. And I've been up for about four hours now getting everything ready to kind of do some more videos today. Uh, I'm gonna start focusing a little bit on the videos um, only because we've got a bunch of new product coming in. We've got rid of a lot of product. And uh, most of what I'm gearing towards now is going to be uh, product uh, review uh, or explanation at least for the purpose of making sure that in 2020, we have a better understanding of which products we want to provide to our customers. And I'll tell you very honestly, sorry, I'm putting my uh, one of my iPads away here. So I've got room. Let me just get this out of the way. I'll be very honest with you. Um, it's, it's easy to jump on the bandwagon. You know, you hear something's good, whatever, and we go for it. And the problem is, is that when we test it and we send it to our customers, we find it doesn't meet the expectations that the manufacturer has, I guess, promised it would meet. And so I'm kind of changing the way things are going to be done here. And um, from now on, they'll have to pass testing before we even order the product um, or order a bunch of it. We have to order some just to test it, but we'll never take it for free. Therefore, we can make an honest opinion without worrying about hurting anybody's feelings uh, and have, being penalized for it. So that being said, right now on the desk here, um, and it's kind of zoomed in, so you guys are going to, I got to zoom out here real quick, but um, let me switch gears here and let me do this. There we go. Now I'll make this part bigger. There we go. Okay, so right now on the desk, I'm going to open the new. These just came in yesterday. This is the 2019, the X90 Plus 2019 edition. There are some changes to it, one of them being that this does come with the Access uh, uh, firmware as well uh, as the 16-channel uh, uh, firmware that was always on here to begin with. Uh, so it is dual-supported. Uh, as a matter of fact, on the sticker here, I was just reading that. On the sticker here, you can see that. This is, um, this is the white uh, Ash White version. So you're getting both... Um, uh, protocols on here, uh, which is one of the differences from the, the standard X90 Plus. Uh, the other thing is that they're no longer shipping with batteries. Um, you are going to have to provide your own battery and charger at this point. Uh, apparently, from what I understand, there was an issue with trying to import LiPos nowadays is starting to become a pain in the butt from the um, from getting them from China. And so, uh, from my understanding from seeing with Frysky is that they're no longer going to be putting them in their transmitter. That way, those can ship separate because Lipo, uh, lipos have to ship totally separate from, uh, or a different way than regular, uh, than, than, sorry, than product that does not contain a lipo. Uh, for example, um, lipos are not supposed to be on planes. In the U.S., if you send lipos, usually they have to go by ground. You have to declare it. And that's why you'll see those stickers on the boxes because they're afraid that they could explode uh, and cause damage to the plane and so forth. So, uh, you know, if you're having to send radios in uh, and you can send them, you know, by air, and then if you put a lipo and you can't, then it's best to just take the lipo out and ship the product without the lipo. Uh, so we did put a, an option on here. Now I have, I'm opening this one up. I've already uh, opened this box. It does come with the USB cable um, and it does come with a lanyard and that's, and some instruction. You know, you, you've got your instruction booklet over here and you've got uh, stick protectors there. And then everything about this is pretty much the same. Um, there's really nothing, there's really nothing, not many changes. Uh, well, let me, let me show you the manual here and we'll go from uh, the uh, options here that you can see. So you've got your switches. There's a new switch here uh, and you've got your uh, SA, the same ones as before. If you guys can see this manual um, and let me see, you've got your bar here. I am going to put the kickstand on this thing. Uh, smart port is on the bottom underneath. SD card is under there. Battery port, which I've already put a battery in here to test it out. Uh, earphone jack, trainer port, USB port and so forth. Um, they did, like I said, they did give you the cable. They did not make it a micro SD like they did on the um, X9 Lite. Uh, and uh, let me think of what else I can tell you about this. I think that's pretty much it for the most part. Um, but what we're gonna do is, I've got a battery in here. I'm, I'm hoping it's charged. I didn't even bother to check. I was really trying to find something that fit. Uh, everything does look good and seems to feel pretty good. Uh, so let's just get started, right? Um, because there's a lot of updating that needs to be done. And if you wanna look in comparison, this is the what we did yesterday, which was the X9 Lite. Okay, so you can see a, a pretty big comparison in size there as well. Um, uh, but uh, in either case, we'll get this one out of the way and we'll get started here. And, oops, I'm on the keyboard. There we go. Okay, so one of the things we're going to do is uh, we're going to get started by powering it on and, and seeing what we've got going on here. So let me go ahead and just hold this down. Now, I don't know if the battery I put in here is charged, so we'll find out. Okay, but let's look at the screen and see where we're at. Okay, so it says a fail safe isn't set. That's fine. Hit exit. All right, and here we go. Uh, we've got everything loaded here. Uh, to start and what we want to do now is it's got OpenTX on here as well uh, so we're ready to go with that uh, and so I'm going to show you exactly where we're going to go as far as updating this and, and so forth but I want to check everything out first so let's let me go ahead and power this off now it does say I have 7.5 volts so we should be okay all right let me go ahead and power this off real quick 
Let's open this down. Now, I use the Adrenaline from Thunderpower RC. Uh, it, it's actually an Adrenaline and it says X9D on the battery. We have these here uh, to sell if you do end up with a transmitter like this one. Uh, but what these do not have are memory cards. So I'm gonna go grab a memory card real quick. <clears throat> and for the sake of this, and I'm hoping this will work, I wanna test this and make sure. Bear with me one second. Okay, so there we go. So let me go ahead and check this out. I'm going to open a new one here. I believe the 32 gig will work, but I don't know. We're going to find out. Okay, so let's just see what we got. Now, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to take my SD card, get out of the package here, and I'm hoping I've got my computer screen on here, so I'm going to show you that as well. So let me do a split screen there. Let's do like this one three okay let's try that all right uh, we don't have to do it. let's do this way okay so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to go ahead and take my sd card i'm going to put it in my laptop now i said yesterday this thing's been crashing when i do this so i'm hoping it doesn't do that but if it does i'll just restart the computer all right so my sd card i'm just gonna if you haven't formatted yours yet i'm going to go ahead and format mine i'm going to get out of this screen view though so let me let me try like this there we go let's just do that instead all right so first thing i'm going to do is go to my sd card and then I'm gonna click format, and I'm just gonna let it format on its own and select quick format. So click start, I'll click okay. Okay, and there goes that, close. And then at that point, what I wanna do now is, and I'm setting this uh, blog page up for you, or this uh, tutorial page on the blog pages, I guess is what it's called, for you guys to be able to download your software. So we're gonna move the radio out of the way, and we're gonna go ahead and download and set up the, and there goes my computer, and it just went to crap. So I'll tell you what, uh, give me a second here. And I will, there we go. Let me get this out of the way. The computer's gonna restart here in a second. I'm gonna take this, for some reason, it does not wanna read these anymore. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use the um, USB stick like I did yesterday. So hang tight with me a second while I get this to restart. And what we're gonna do now though is, is on the radio, um, we know it powers up, we know everything's set with it, but I wanna go ahead and get it ready for updating. And part of that updating is gonna be getting OpenTX loaded. And um, I've got the links for you on the website. So I'm gonna show you how that works. We're going to load the contents to the memory card. We're going to download Fry Skies updates, uh, download the OpenTX updates, flash everything, and then kind of go over real quickly what it does and make this the quick, quick setup for part one. Okay, so now let me get back into my laptop that crashed and uh, see if we can uh, get this taken care of. So once in. Let's see. All right, so we're getting back in now. So bear with me a second. All right, now let me start the software here. And let's see if we can get the computer back up online real quick. Sorry guys, it's, I don't know why the computer wants to be stupid like this, but it does. And I don't really ever edit my stuff to, I don't feel like delaying everything. So let's just kind of get to it here. And there we go. All right, so we're back now in Windows and I'm gonna go ahead and take my memory stick I'm gonna put it inside the USB reader instead so I don't crash my computer, and I'm gonna plug it into the computer, okay? And the reason I'm doing that is because there's a lot of files that we're gonna to have to be copying, and I'd prefer to do it this way than have to use do it through the radio, which runs off the USB. All right, so the stick is empty. There's nothing on here right now. Now what we wanna do is, and I have used, um, you can go to the website, Cyclone FPV, to do this part, but what you, what you uh, uh, let's just open Startup Pages. Okay, so what I did is I gave some links and I'm just building this uh, page today and it's gonna be finished after I finish this video. But if you scroll down to the left here and go to tutorials, and then the first thing you're gonna see right now is gonna be the OpenTX instructions and updates for the Frank Sky Transmitter. So go ahead and click on that. And the links are very basic right now. There's nothing here. I will update more of these, but the most important thing right now is go to the OpenTX website. It'll open a new page. Uh, and I'm not sure what happened there. Let me, oh, one second. Let me go ahead, I see what I did here, so let me just, uh, let me just do this. Let's see if that works. I realized that I was doing a local link, and so I needed to go ahead, so let me just kinda, let me go back. 
here and click refresh. Let's see if that takes care of it. So when you click that link, yes, there you go. So now you're going to go to OpenTX website. Sorry about that, guys. Um, and then from here, uh, you're going to go ahead and click on your OpenTX 2.2.3, and you can also get your companion links here, right? So if you go to OpenTX 2.3.0, yesterday when I did the video, Release 3 had been out. Now, as of last night, I guess by the time I woke up today, now they've got uh, Release Candidate 4. Click on that, and you're going to download, if you haven't done it already, um, okay, you can download the uh, OpenTX Companion 2.3.0 Release Candidate 4. Now, I already have 2.3.0 Release Candidate 3, and if you have that, you don't have to download 4, it'll prompt you to update. So here's what happens. I'm going to open OpenTX, and here's, my, here's a new splash screen for 2.3. And you should get a screen here. It should prompt you. There you go. A new version of Companion is available. Would you like to download it? Click Yes. And you can save it wherever you want. Um, let me see. I guess I put mine in my downloads folder. I don't know why it's prompting it to go there, but I'm going to put mine in my downloads folder and click save. So, I mean, it, you know, you don't, the only reason you would go to the website now is because when I have 2.2.4, which is the 2.2 series, which is this icon down here on the left. Uh, well, let me go ahead and launch the installer. Yes, uh, it did not prompt me to go to 2.3. But when you're in 2.3 and they've got release candidate updates, it will prompt you to continue to update if you want, so you don't have to keep going back and forth. Just make sure you're at 2.3 at this point. All right, so click Next, go through it, and you're done. Let it run real quick, okay? All right, now click Next, and now you can click to open it, I guess. Uh, it, should, it should clear it out of the way here, so we're going to see real quickly. Let me minimize the screen. Okay, so now you can see the top here. It's 2.3.0 release candidate four, okay? And now, because we're gonna be using a new radio, here's what we're gonna do. So let's get the radio set up. Now we don't have to plug in our, sorry, we do not have to plug in our radio yet to the screen, right? It doesn't matter. What we wanna do right now is the first thing is, let's go ahead and make a radio profile. Now I have not done the X9D Plus 2019 yet, so we're gonna do this one together and set it up just like we would if we were doing a brand new one. Um, so the first thing I want to do, and I do have the X9D Plus, but not the 2019. So we're going to create a new profile, right? So we're going to add a radio profile, add a radio profile, and we're going to call it X. Uh, I'll call it Tar. Uh, if my keyboard's going to work, sorry. Let's try this. Tarix X9D Plus 2019. Okay, and you're going to come over here, and you're going to select which model. And you see they now have the model for X9D Plus 2019. You click that. Okay, so here's some of the choices you have, and I did spend some time looking over this yesterday. Um, so uh, one of the things that we want to look at is if you look at the, um, I'm going to show you this difference between my radio here and, uh, well, let me try this real quick. Okay, so I'm going to turn this one on. Welcome to Earth and TX. Okay, and I'm going to turn on my QX7S. Welcome to Earth and TX. Okay, and I want you to look at one of the things that is different than at least I can show you. Okay, so if you look at this screen here, right, you can see on the bottom here, and I'm hoping you can see that with the glare, but let me see if I can kind of, okay. So on this screen here, uh, let me move these. You'll see the, um, let me see where I'm at. Okay, so you'll see the uh, items moving, right? Like the throttle and stuff. And this is actually moving in a percentage, okay? This is what uh, they've done to put percentage values here. Whereas on here, you're actually moving uh, uh, with the actual count or the actual number that we would use in measurement. And there's, a, I think they call it uh, seconds or some, something that affect, uh, I don't remember the, oh, you know what? Actually, I think I have the document open. Uh, here it is. So, no, uh, there's a manual here that I was looking at and explained it, but basically you're either going to get it in percentage, you're going to get it in actual numbers. So I don't know what the technical term for the actual numbers. I can't remember at the top of my head, but you know, we always talk throttle between 1000 and 2000. And so this is actually going to give you those values. And here it's going to give you the percentage of where you're at. Okay, so that is what this option is here on the screen. And let me show you that real quickly. Uh, and let me put these on the bottom. So bear with me a second. There we go. Okay, so on the OpenTX option here, you have the uh, the PPM option here. This is going to be the difference between doing it. And I, what is the US? Is something seconds? Um, I wish I could remember right now, but sorry, it's just been a long morning. Uh, so anyways, this checking this box means that when you do the firmware, you're going to actually see it 
in its actual value here and not a percentage value. Um, the uh, fail choice and fail mode. So apparently in the racing, and this is where, I mean, I don't race that much at all, really, compared to you guys, but uh, you have to turn off some of your telemetry, right? Except for your RSSI. So this option allows you to turn that off so that you're compliant with whatever races require you to do that. Um, the choice option, right? Uh, this option gives you that mode to where you disable your telemetry altogether except for RSSI. This option tells you that you can make that selection on your transmitter and it asks you if you want to do that yes or no as opposed to always being on or as opposed to you having to plug it back into a computer. So you can select both of those if you'd like. That's not going to be a big deal. Um, and then I don't worry about the override <coughs> channel. <coughs> the no heli, we're going to minimize our menu selection by taking that off. Uh, the global variables, I guess I'll take that for now because I don't really mess with them. The Lewis scripts, I am going to add. And then I am going to put the flex and the new font. Uh, I don't know about the internal PPM. Let me see this support for PPM internal module jack uh, or hack. Um, yeah, I think that that is now uh, part of the, um, uh, what is that, the uh, latency issue. So I believe that that is taken care of. So we can go ahead and add that as well. Uh, and I'll check to make sure. Let me, uh, let me, I'll verify that in just a little bit because I need to come back over and check on this because I know that there was an issue with crossfire uh let me you know what let me just check real quick hold on hold on let me just internal ppm let me just see what open tx says open tx internal ppm menu so let me see uh, i'm not sure if they're gonna give me that Let me see if they've got something here. Okay, so let me get these out of the way.
Okay. All right, so now that we have, uh, once we have 2.3 loaded, like you can see on the screen here, what we're gonna wanna do now is we're gonna wanna go ahead and set up our radio profile, right? And so uh, I have not done this yet. Uh, I'm setting mine up just now like yours for the new X9D. So uh, X9D plus 2019 that is. So I'm gonna go to settings, radio profiles, and I'm gonna go to add radio profile. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna name this Tarix X9D plus 2019, okay? And uh, what we're gonna do here is uh, this is gonna show you, okay, so let's go down. The next thing is we're gonna drop and get our uh, menu. Uh, to drop down menu to type our radio type, which is gonna be the X90 plus 2019. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and select our options here. So what we're gonna do here is this is gonna do the, um, this is basically going to do this here. I figured I would show you this because it would be easier. So here's the X9 light that we did yesterday. Welcome to our And here is my QX7. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of give you a bigger picture here. All right. So on the, um, here, let's do it like this. Okay. So if you look, and let me get out of both of these. All right. Uh, what you have, what you're looking at right now is obviously both screens uh, when you turn them on and get in there. Uh, but what I want to show you is what one of these menu options do. So instead of a percentage, and that's what this is, uh, that's what one of these menu options is, is instead of, uh, a percentage of your throttle, for example, let's say a percentage value, so um, which is what this represents here, uh, it's going to show you uh, the value of the same uh, the, the same stick value, but it's going to do it in microseconds instead, right? So here's what you're going to have. So you see how you're looking here. This is a microsecond value, and this is a percentage value. Okay, so you've got percentage value like what we're used to, and now you've got a microsecond value right here, which is basically what we're used to doing when we do our um, uh, you know, when we talk about throttle and where we're at, we're say, okay, our throttle limit is between 1,000 and 2,000 or whatever the threshold is and the minimum and maximum. We're doing that in, uh, in, in not in percentage points, right? And not in the percentage values. And so this allows you to actually do it just like that. And so in case you guys didn't see it, again, um, if you look at the bottom on the X9 Lite, uh, you're going to have this in microseconds. And if you look on the uh, QX7S, you're going to have it in a percentage, okay? So what you can do is you can pick between those two. I am going to actually enjoy using the uh, microseconds and not the uh, percentage anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and select that right here. So I'm going to click that as one of my menu options. Now the fail choice and the fail mode, I did look into more of that yesterday and try to understand where it applies. And it really more apply, uh, applies to the racers. That's what it's designed for, right? Uh, it's designed to, um, uh, let me see if I can do this here. Okay, so it's designed uh, to, uh, I guess during races with telemetry, there must be some races where you can't have telemetry. F I don't race. I don't know. I haven't been to a race. I know my guys do and some of you guys do, but I've never been uh, talked to about this part of it. But apparently, uh, this is becoming an issue where they want to disable all telemetry um, except for RSSI. All right. And so that being said, uh, this allows you to do uh, the fail safe mode, which uh, basically means that um, you will not be able to. Uh, 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 have um, uh, not fail safe mode. Sorry, um, you will not have um, uh, telemetry. It'll always be disabled except for RSSI. Sorry, I'm, I'm drawing a mind blank here. And then what this one says is you will have the option to disable it or enable it without having to take your computer or your your transmitter and plug it into a computer. So uh, FAI mode, and I keep saying fail safe mode, but it's not. FAI mode is uh, basically the um, the uh, ability for you. Well, here, let me, let me just show you like this. What is it? Um, so FAI, disables telemetry, uh, and, and, except for RSSI and voltage with contest regulations, and FAI, okay, what?
Okay. All right. Now that we are in, um, now that we are in uh, uh, Companion 2.3. Uh, point zero uh, release candidate four. What we want to do is we want to go ahead and set up our own radio, right? And I have not uh, set mine up yet, so we're going to do this together. But there's a couple things we need to look at first. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to settings and we're going to go to uh, radio profiles and we're going to say add radio profile. I'm going to call mine uh, Tarix X9D plus 2019, and I'm going to drop down the menu here to find X9D plus 2019. And uh, now we're going to have some options here, some build options that did, were not available before. And these are some of the changes. And I'm going to try to get some of these right. Some of them I still don't, uh, I'm not really sure of as far as what use they're going to have for this average flyer, the standard flyer, a hobbyist, but we'll give it a shot anyway. Uh, the first one is going to be the um, right here. This is going to be the microsecond display versus the percentage display on your stick value. So let me just show you what this looks like because I have both two controllers right here that I want to show you on, okay? So if I can fit these on the screen, let me see if I can do that. Okay, this new option right here in the in the corner right here, the PPM US, um, what we're gonna do is, let me show you what that, what that means in terms of your radio. Okay, so if you look at uh, my QX7 right here, right? So on my QX7, the stick values, sorry, the values that you see in the screen here are the percentage, all right, of the stick value, okay? And then what you see here, on the X9 light that I did yesterday, after adding this, is the actual microsecond value, all right, which is basically like our value when we talk about throttle range, 1,000 or 2,000, what have you. So instead of looking at a percentage, you're actually going to get a, uh, a value now. And I kind of like this better, so I'm going to keep this. I prefer that over the percentage, so we're going to go that route, all right? So well, let me get my QX7 out of here. Let me power both of these down, and we can put our, uh, put our uh, X9 D plus 2019 here if we need to. All right, so um, I'm gonna go ahead, actually move that out of the way because I'm gonna need my keyboard. Uh, so I'm gonna select that one because I do like that. Okay, so the FAI, which is the International Aeronautic Federation, I believe, or it's, uh, it's in Switzerland, it's the Federation Aeronautic du International, whatever, maybe. I actually have their website open. I was trying to um, see if I could, and I was wanting to look at this. Here it is, right here. All right, so it is the Federation of Aeronautic International, which would be the um, International Aeronautic Federation, um, I assume is how it would go if we were to say it like that. But in either case, this is theirs. This is something to do with their competitions and the fact that um, they will allow you to not have any telemetry except for... Okay. Okay, so that is... All right, so now that we've got the radios out of the way, that is what this first selection is for. And this selection will actually uh, give you into the microseconds versus the percentage, which I like. So I'm going to select that, all right? The next um, options here are going to be for the um, uh, International Aeronautic Federation, uh, which is not said that way. It's the Federation Aeronautic International without any accent added to that. That is in Switzerland. And they are the ones who put on the FAI races uh, and competitions around the world. And what they have said is basically, uh, you are to have on your telemetry, you are to have no telemetry except for voltage and RSSI. So this mode right here, this option here, automatically disables your telemetry except for RSSI and voltage. However, they also added now this option to where you can change that and toggle it from your transmitter rather than having to plug your transmitter into the computer and change the firmware, all right? So um, you can add both of these if you, uh, sorry, uh, I apologize. You have the choice to add it if you want to make it mandatory. If you don't want to make it mandatory, you want to have the option, you put the uh, FAI choice, or if it's mandatory no matter what, and you are going to have to plug your transmitter into the computer to change that, uh, then you go this route. Now, I don't know what they're going to say they're going to want. I would assume it's going to, some of it's on the honor system. I'm not sure how well that's going to go. But uh, for right now, I'm just going to leave it as a choice because I'm kind of wanting to see what it does. Uh, the no channel override, I'm not going to worry about that. Um, the uh, override channel X. I'm not worried about that right now. The no heli option, I do want that because I'm not doing anything with heli, so I don't want any of those menus there for CPPM or whatever it may be. Um, uh, the global variables, I'll go ahead and put that there too. The Lewis scripts, I do want. Uh, and this would um, make your radio to where it's compliant and turn off features that are not legal outside in the EU. Um, we don't need that. Uh, we are going to put the Flex R9M. I am going to use the, the new font. And I'm not sure about the internal PPM. I have not seen that on my menu yet, so I'm gonna to try to figure out more about that first, but let's keep going. So this is my build that I want, all right? I'm gonna do the FAI choice because I'm kind of curious to see how that's gonna function. Uh, and then uh, everything else here looks okay. 
All right, now my SD card structure path. So I do not have the SD card uh, structure loaded yet, but I do know where I'm gonna put it. So I'm gonna go to my downloads like I do normally and go to my transmitter folder. And I'm gonna create a new folder uh, called X9D uh, and I'm gonna put a P-2019, okay? And that's gonna be my new X9D plus. And in here, I'm gonna create a folder called card contents, just like I normally do, all right? Okay, so with that done, now what I need to do is I need to get the card contents, but I'm gonna select this for right now and let it know that's where I want to put my stuff. And then under transmitters X9DP2019, I'm gonna put my backup folder. So I'm gonna label this, if I can spell it properly, backup, all right? And I'm gonna tell it to select that folder. All right, so now I've got these two done. I am going to go ahead and tell it to enable automatic backup before I write firmware. I am leaving mine as mode 2, putting my default channel order, order as T-A-E-R. Uh, I will append, uh, I guess I will for now, it doesn't really matter because I usually um, name them, rename them. And then I will tell it to offer to write the TX, the, uh, the firmware, once it's downloaded, right? So then we're going to go to application settings. Now on the X9 Lite, right, and I want you to remember this here. On the X9 Lite, when we did that yesterday, if you did not tell it that you wanted release candidate testing, uh, release candidates for testing, there was nothing to download for the X9 Lite. I don't know about the X9, uh, X9D Plus 2019, so I'm gonna change it to the default of um, only stable candidates, and I'm gonna see if it gives me any firmware, and if it doesn't, then I'll go to the other option. So pay attention to that, and let's see what happens, all right? So I'm gonna leave it there. Uh, use model wizard, remove empty model slots when deleting models. Uh, uh, that, that's fine. I'm not worried about that. Um, enable auto. Uh, you know what? Hold on. Remove empty. Now, let me make sure I want this one because let me see this here. I want to say that I didn't have that. This option maintains a behavior from older OpenTX version where empty model slots are preserved when a model is deleted. This option is deselected. The other models may be. No, I don't want that. So I want to go ahead and leave this here because I title my receivers to match the model slot. So if it's receiver like um, uh, 13 and it's in slot 13. If I delete slot 12, I don't want uh, slot 13 to be moved to slot 12 because my receiver is numbered by the slot it's in. So that's for me to organize and I kind of prefer that. Automatic backup and we do have the backup going to um, transmitters and a transmitter backup as a general folder. I'm not touching the splash screen or anything else. So I think we're gonna go this route. This looks pretty good so I'm gonna click OK. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the download button and I'm gonna say check for updates. Now I haven't downloaded one yet so we're gonna see what happens. Here's the error message. It's not really an error message. This is the message you get when you don't take those uh, builds. So I'm gonna click OK, go back to my settings, and here's my X9D plus 2019. And this time in application settings, I'm gonna tell it that I want release candidates for testing. All right, I'm gonna click OK. And now I'm gonna go back and click my downloads folder and check for updates. And now I am gonna get my updates. So we're gonna go ahead and click yes. Okay, now I have still, have not plugged in my radio yet, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead, in just a minute I'll do that, but right now it's not that important for me. I really wanna get my firmware and everything set up first. So I wanna put this in my new folder, transmitters, X9DP2019, and I'm gonna put it, uh, I'm gonna download it right here, and it's a too long of a file name. I don't know if that's gonna actually be able to be read, but we'll see. So let's go ahead and we'll download that first, all right? Because the next thing we have to do is download the card contents. So we're not even close to being ready to write to the radio yet, even though it may prompt us here in just a minute to write to the radio. <clears throat> well, let me see. I've got a million emails coming across, so let's see what we've got while that's going. And there's nothing critical, so we're good. All right, now this is taking a little while, but uh, don't worry about it. We'll figure this out in just a second. Um, main thing is I want to get this stuff down and set up properly so that we can set our folders up in the computer properly for it and then you guys can see how to organize it, all right? And then we'll get to the next part. This thing will hurry up. And I don't know why it takes so long. I've noticed yesterday it even took long and I stepped away and then of course as soon as I walked away it came back up. This is that federation, by the way. This is pretty interesting. I read up on their rules and changes. Um, and you can also actually, I'll put a link to this page. Now this is the 2.2, but this is some of the changes that they made as well. Um, and uh, it's kind of neat, I mean, to read up on this. Now, I did not find the 2.3 manual. So I'm gonna try to see if, um, 
I wonder if I can get to that. I don't know. But I will give you a link to that one there. It's neat to kind of read up on these. Yeah, you see, I don't see the manual for 2.3, so we'll have to just wait and see. Um, and then again, I'll put that link here. So when you guys go there, you can at least read on some of these that have not changed. All right, let's go back to our screen real quick. And do I want to write the front? No, I do not want to write it to the radio right now. But now I do want to download the SD card contents because we don't have that yet. Now, even if you have 2.3, uh, which I downloaded yesterday, you need to get 2.4. And for some reason, it does not have it. So let me, that link didn't work. So let me go to their page real quick because that's right here. I put that link here, the SD card contents. And for some reason here, it does work. So let's go to X9D plus 2019. And this is the 2.3. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to go, I guess the link has got an issue. I don't know why, but I'm going to go ahead and download this real quick. And that's going to put it in my downloads folder. And then just like the X90 Lite that we did yesterday, um, or the X9 Lite, I mean, we're going to do the same thing with the X90 Plus, but because it's two different transmitters, the, obviously the card contents changes. So let's give it a second. It's downloading pretty fast. Let's give that a second. And then when we do that, we're also going to go and do the uh, Fry Sky uh, downloads. Okay. So Hang tight, we're gonna hurry as fast as we can here, but I can't go any faster than this stuff. Um, and then once we have everything set up, I'll plug the radio in, all right? And we'll get started with the radio. But I don't wanna do anything until the SD card and all our files are in place, so I can show you guys exactly how I would do a clean build. All right, so we do have the file downloaded. I'm gonna show in the folder here. And in my downloads folder, <clears throat> you will see the SD card here. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut that and I'm gonna put it in, go to my transmitter X90P, and I'm gonna paste it right here. All right, I wanna put that right here. Now I'm gonna right click on it and extract all. It's gonna take a second to do that. And so we'll wait just a minute to do that. Now, while that is happening, I guess we can go ahead and do the Fry Sky download. So let's go ahead and go back to the page I had here, uh, right here on our, and, and then I gave you just a very simple, uh, because I haven't put all the links yet, I will uh, populate, but since I knew we were doing this radio right now, I gave you just this link. It'll open in a new window, and that's going to take you to Price Guy's website, right? And from there, uh, you will be at the X9D Plus 2019, and you can pretty much click download and go to any radio, but I just have this one set. And I'm going to click firmware, and I'm going to show you what we're going to do with these and how you're going to check for those, okay? First thing is, though, we are going to want to download this to support the R9M 2019 access, so you will want to do this one. You also will want to do this one. All right, now there was a talk before about does the most recent firmware include the ones before? And the answer seems to be yes, except when it's specific to um, a, a particular part, for example. So what we have here is we have this supporting the R9M 2019 access uh, uh, protocol. This will support the internal, um, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, the internal receiver, right? And so, um, uh, I'm getting all my stuff screwed up. Sorry. This will, uh, yeah, this will, uh, this will update your internal uh, tra uh, transmitter, I believe. Uh, and then the other one, not the receiver, the receivers will be on the other side, but you also have to update the, um, uh, the receivers that you do, but this will update the internal transmitter. And so you want to, the internal module, that's the word I was trying to think. Okay. Let me start over. Okay. So when we get to this page here, right? Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look at both of these and I'm going to show you how they apply. But one thing I do want to point out is that we discussed before how does the most recent update include all the updates before and firmware from FrySky. The, for the most part, the answer is yes, except there are some changes. There are some exceptions, I think, from what I'm seeing here and what I've tested in the past. First one is going to be uh, when the um, update um, is specific to a part. Uh, for example, the update here that you see, OpenTX version 2.3.0, that was released on the 10th of September, this is for a specific area to support the R9M with the access protocol. Um, then what we have is we have the next update, which is the ISRM, which is the internal RF module. This is the update for that only, like it specifically says here. So if you were to load the top one, you're not going to most likely get the bottom one. It's because that update is for that only. Now you will see updates from FrySky down the road, especially on the receivers, where one update will cover all the rest. On the transmitters, you need to be a little bit more aware of what the update covers because chances are you will have to update each file or add each file. And that's what I'm sensing so far and that's what I've tested and found so far. So we're going to end up downloading both of these, but I want to show you how you're going to check for it first, all right? So let's get to our OpenTX right here. And um, we download our SD card contents. Those are right here and we extracted them, right? And if you remember, you'll see now the zipped file 
and you're going to see the extracted file. And if you remember, I right clicked on this yesterday with another one, and you can see it's 139 megs, of which about 115 of that is languages. So we're going to go to sounds, and just to make this easier, we're going to delete the languages we don't need. Now, I'm only going to keep English as the language I need, and I'm going to delete all the rest of these. All right? And what that's going to do is that's going to shrink the, fol the folder size down to... 16.9 uh, from 139 to 16.9. So that's a dramatic drop, right? So these are our card contents. And this is what we want to move to our card contents folder. So I'm going to click copy and I'm going to go to my card contents folder and I'm going to click paste. All right. And that's going to actually make my card contents folder that, that I already told OpenTX I'm going to be using. Now, the firmware folder is what I want you to pay attention to right now. That is where we're going to start dropping our firmware and we're going to organize it properly. All right, so let's go. Here's the firmware that we downloaded. It's a super long file. I don't know if the radios can read it. It used to not be able to. So um, what I would do is I would name it, you know, like uh, drop the name down quite a bit. So I'm going to rename this just because I'm going to rename this to um, uh, OpenTX or I'll just call it OTX because we know it's OpenTX, OTX-091719. And I'm going to leave it like that. That's it. All the other options, I already know what I had, and I can always go back and check. But I'm going to keep these files small so I can read them on the screen. And now I'm going to take this, and I'm going to cut it. And I'm going to go to my card contents folder and go to firmware. And I'm going to make a new folder. And I'm going to call this one uh, Radio FW. And that's going to stand for Radio Firmware, OK? I'm going to double click on that, and I'm going to paste my file. This is how I'm going to keep organized with all my things because you will put other updates in here, receiver updates, and you want to have them organized. The XSR, the XSR, the X4R, I mean the X4R SB, um, the RXSR, the XM Plus, the XM Micro. I mean, there's so many of them that you need to keep them um, filed properly and also uh, labeled properly for the order so you know if you have the most recent one. And I cannot stress that enough, but you know, you do what you want. I'm just telling you it's probably a good idea. All right. All right. So. We've got the firmware listed here. We've got everything that we need right here. Now we need to get our downloads from FrySky because we've got to add that to our firmware folder also. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to download, and I'm going to I'm going to show you here. I'm going to plug in this battery real quick and show you. Uh, well, actually, no. I'm going to download it first, and then I'll show you. So go ahead and click download for this file and download for this file, and they're both going to end up in your uh, downloads folder right here. All right. So we're going to wait. There's the first one. Okay, and then you have the next one, oh, and here's the next one right here. So we're going to take both of these, uh, we're going to hit control, click on both of them, and cut. And we're going to go to our transmitter folder, X9D, the P2019, and we're going to paste those here. All right, again, we're going to keep everything, these are all just basically going to be our zip files that we have in case we ever need to get them again. Don't delete those. All right, so we know that this is our ISRM, so what we're going to do is we're going to extract and we can tell it to show, well, I'm not going to have it show the files. I know exactly where it's going. And then this is going to be our um, uh, September 5th, 2000, it was the 10th, I thought. So yeah, uh, it says the date files here, uh, September 5th, 2019, but the update time was the 10th. So I guess they may have made a change since then. But in either case, um, what am I doing? Let me go back to my folder. Okay, so we are here. And we are going to right click and, I, and we're going to extract. And I don't need to, again, I don't need to show me the files. But what we do want to do is, okay, so now I would say like this I'm going to make a new folder here and I'm going to call it FR Sky uh, Firmware uh, Downloads. All right. And because I don't want to have a million files in my folder, I'm going to take the ones I just did that are still zipped. I'm going to put them there. And that's going to be my place for safe, safekeeping. Okay. There. Then I'm going to make another folder. And I'm going to call this one, uh, oops, sorry. I'm going to call this OpenTX uh, Firmware Downloads. And I'm going to put my stuff in there. That's a zip card. That's a zip file that goes there. All right. Now, I've already taken my files out of here and copied these, so I really don't need this folder anymore. Uh, and if I do need to go back to it, I've already got a zipped version. Uh, so I'm going to delete my SD card, uh, the one that I got downloaded and extracted, because I already put the card contents in here. So I've got my OpenTX firmware downloads here, and those are going to have my zip files from OpenTX. And I've got my uh, FrySky firmware downloads here, and that will have all my FrySky stuff, and that's just going to stay on my computer. So now I've got the firmware files here that I extracted. I'm going to open them because sometimes FrySky will make a dual layer, uh, a subfolder within a folder, right? 
and I don't like that really that much. And I also want to make sure that I don't have any EU versions of the software because I don't need those. So here's the X9. Uh, this is the one that was released on, in September. And this is the first file we're going to take. So they have put it as a folder inside a subfolder. So here's a folder. Here's a subfolder. And I don't really like that. So I'm going to go into the folder and right click here and click cut. And I'm going to go up to my, trans, uh, my folder here, go to my card contents, go to firmware. And I'm going to um, make a new folder here. And I'm going to call it, uh, let me see, that's going to be radio firmware. So we're going to call this, uh, let me see. I'll just call it like this. So I'm going to call it FR Sky um, uh, Firmware. Okay. And I know that that means that that's going to be the firmware. And I'm going to paste my folder in there. All right. And that's going to be for my radio. Right. So I'm going to do that. And you could always put that under radio firmware if you wanted. I'm going to uh, keep them separate for now. Um, and so I'm going to go back to card contents here. So now I've got my firmware. This is going to be my OpenTX. And you know what? I'll probably just change that name. So let me just do that. So that'll be OpenTX firmware. And this will be FrySky firmware. Okay. That'll probably be easier. Uh, and then I'm going to go and take my ISRM again, and I'm going to click cut, go to card contents, go to firmware, go to FrySky firmware, and put that here. All right. So now I've got all my stuff. Uh, and let me make sure. I think I have a subfolder here. So let me do a cut and go up one and do a paste. All right. So basically we get rid of the subfolders. So our, our folder hierarchy looks just like this. We have our card contents and in there we have our firmware and in there we have it allocated. Now, if you make another folder, for example, let's say you're going to do like I'm going to do uh, a uh, uh, RXSR because I'm going to put my updates for RXSR here. So I'm going to put RXSR. That means that any RXSR update, so let's just say as an example, I go to the FrySky website and I go to downloads. And I'm like, hey, you know what? I've got an RXSR. I need to update it. I know I'm kind of getting off topic, but I want to show you why I do it like this. So let me go to receivers and let me find the RXSR. Of course, it's not going to be the one on the first page. Um, so let me go again. R, there's the XSR and there's the RXSR. So I'm going to click this. I'm going to say, okay, I know I need that firmware. And there's the access firmware. So I guess, you know what? I might as well do that. We can test that. So this is the first release. This is the second release. This will contain this one. So I'm going to download this release. And it's going to go to my um, uh, downloads folder. And I'm going to show this in the folder here. And I'm going to take this now. And I'm going to cut it. I'm going to go to transmitters. X9D plus. Uh, sorry, X9D 2019. And then I can put it in the FrySky uh, firmware downloads right now if I want and click paste. Okay. And then I want to extract it. I don't need to see it. Just let it extract. I'll see the folder here that I need. And then I'm going to cut this piece because it has the files in it. Go to here, go to my card contents, go to firmware, go to my new RXSR and paste it right here. Now my radio is actually going to contain the access update also. All right. Now to, to clean it up, um, I'm going to delete, I go back to my uh, X90, there we go, and go to my thing, and I'm going to delete that folder that I opened because really all this is forced to hold the old zip files. Hope that makes sense, guys. Um, it's a matter of how you want to organize it. I can just tell you that as you add more files, it can become real confusing. So we have the X9D, we have our card contents folder right here, and there's everything in our firmware. We have now the OpenTX firmware, we have the RXSR firmware, if you're going to have an RXSR or if you want to use whatever you want to use, and then we have our FrySky firmware for our radio right here. All right, the next thing, now that we're done with this, the next thing we want to do is we want to take our entire card contents folder, all the contents here. Uh, let me just select all of these. And we want to right click and click copy, go to our formatted card that's still on our computer and click paste. And it's going to move these so much faster than if we did it over a, um, a cable, okay, a USB cable, all right? And now we're about to get done. I'm, I'm sorry if it takes too long, but I, I got to have things organized. So it's very important to me that we do that. All right. Once we're done with that, we can go ahead now and right click and eject the SD card. There it is. So I'm going to take the card out now and I will go ahead and give a shot uh, down here of what I'm going to be doing. So let me go ahead and do that. Uh, let me see. There we go. All right. So now we'll take the memory card out. I'm going to take my, uh, oops, I left the battery in here. I'm going to take my uh, X9D uh, Plus, and I'm going to put the card in 
the slot that is right here uh, near the battery, right? And I believe you will put it, oh, I guess you put it label up, that's right. So let's put it label up, and there it is right there. Okay, so I've got that inserted now. And I'm gonna go ahead and plug my battery in, although you don't have to. I'm gonna plug it in. This is a pretty tight fit, by the way, but it does fit. So let me just go ahead and be careful with it, get that to kind of fit down in there like that. And I'm gonna put the uh, cover back on now, all right? All right, we now have our radio ready. It has not been used yet, and I need to get the, they did give us the USB cable, which I put somewhere. Let me find where I put it. Oh, the mess is continue around here. Let me see where I put that. No, I think it's right here. All right, so let me plug that in. And what we're gonna do now is put our radio in DFU mode. So to do that, as many of you know, you will just basically take your radio and hold the sliders together, bring them to the center, press the power button, and then let Welcome go. To the TX. Uh, I don't think actually I did that Throttle right. Warning. No, I didn't. Switch let me warning. go ahead and turn this off. Okay, so let's try this again. There we go. I held it too long and it just became a bag of power. So just to show you guys, when I go to exit, um, to don't make the TX. mistake I just did. I've been messing with these radios too long already. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and power it off real quick and show you what you do. It's a very quick process. Hold these in and then press the power button. And once you press it, let everything go and you're gonna go into your DFU mode, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug that into the back, plug the USB in. There we go. And if I had my kickstand on here already, it would be standing up. So let me, I hate to do it like this, but that's okay. So let's go to OpenTX and I will show you the screen now. And here we go, all right? So we have our radio set and I'm just gonna put like a LiPo or something under this for the time being. Okay, there's our radio. And right now this stuff doesn't really matter. What matters is what's on the screen. It will open up your memory card slot, okay, here. So just, you can go ahead and close that. So the, we've done all these now, right? But what we haven't done is written our firmware to the radio yet. So we did download it though. So what we can do now is we can click okay and we can go over to our um, uh, option here on the left which is write firmware to radio. And it's gonna ask you where you have your firmware. Now, I, don't be I believe that I moved mine, and I did. I put, it in, I put it in the card contents folder. It's also down here. So, I mean, if I, if I had left it down there, it would be down here. So it's in the card contents folder. And I'm gonna actually go ahead and um, I'm gonna copy that and put it back in the other folder. I should have made a copy and not deleted it. But, so one second, there we go. Let's put this here, okay? So this is the firmware that we did. Um, and I'm gonna tell it to go ahead, and you, like I said, you could use it, you can load it from the card contents, because that's where I, that's where it matters to me that it is at, so I can load it from here. And I'm gonna tell it to go ahead and write. And go ahead and click write, and here it goes, okay? Uh, it's not compatible with the one that is currently installed, and that should be okay. Uh, I do not believe that that's gonna be a problem, because it has a bootloader on there. So let me verify now that I will uh, go back to my download and I'm going to check for the updates. Okay, and we're gonna download the firmware. And I'll put that, okay. All right, so now that we have the radio plugged in and it's in DFU mode, what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and update the radio, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that we are in our uh, profile here or in our X90 there. And um, we can do a card content comparison if you want first to synchronize them. So let's go ahead and click synchronize. And uh, it's gonna synchronize where we dedicated our card contents locally and our D folder and just click start. See what happens. So it should really not have anything created. They should all be skipped. And let's see, my wife's about to walk in here. So give me a second. Now let me open the door for her. I'm doing a video. Hey mama, how'd it go? All right, I'll be in just one sec. Yes, sir. Love you. Hey, can I have a coffee? Yes. Coffee, please, please. Thanks. Yes. All right, love you. Love you. Okay, so we're gonna do a card content uh, synchronization right now, and um, it's a, it'll almost be done here. And the one thing I do want to check out is on the OpenTX website, right? Uh, no, 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 no. I'm gonna go back here move this out of the way because there is something I want to know which is can you let me see if there's an error uh, okay 
that's fine. All right. So uh, we're gonna we did our, our our contents here. So now we know that what's on our computer and what's on our card here are identical, and that's because we copied it directly over. So we're good there. So now we want to go ahead and update our radio, right? So uh, let's uh, write the firmware, and uh, we are using the X9D P 2019. So let's go ahead and click. I don't think it's gonna find it there. I don't believe that's the right one, but let's um, let's see what happens. Firmware is not compatible with the one currently installed. Hmm. Okay. So let's see what happens now. Uh, close the process. Finish. Download. And install the companion. Use. Okay, that's fine. So let me close this out because it seems to automatically jump out of this. And let's. I wonder if I do the. Um, Well, that should work. So let me go ahead and click. Let me go ahead and close out. Well, let me see. Hold on a second. X9D plus 2019. That's what that is. Make sure I didn't grab the wrong radio. No, I didn't. Okay. So let me go and check my settings again. Make sure that everything looks good. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, no, that looks right. Let's go ahead and click OK, and then we'll download that again. Hey, Mama. Thank you so much. You're welcome. How was the mall? Uh, good, except for I got there 30 minutes early, so I had to sit. <laughs> I thought they opened at 9, but they opened at 10. That's awesome. So, that's why it took me so long. I was wondering. OK, it says firmware is not compatible with the one currently installed. Not sure what that is about. Um, so I'm going to try something different. Uh, let me do this. Let me do a write to firmware. And I'm going to just say write to TX. And this could break it for all I know at this point, but we're going to see. Hmm. Okay, now we're going to try to see again. This time, I'm going to tell it to write, but this time I'm going to tell it to check for compatibility. That's weird. So it pushed through. All right. So with that done, I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to eject uh, by doing a safe eject here on the USB. And I'm going to uh, safe eject again. And this way now we can pull the uh, USB out. And we're going to go to exit. And we're going to see what happens. Welcome to Open TX. Throttle warning. Okay. Switch warning. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to hold the menu button down, right? So here, let's do this now um, because we are done with that part of OpenTX. And I want to go ahead and go to page, go to firmware, and then we are going to do the bootloader. So we're going to go to OpenTX firmware, and there's the one that we used, and we're going to flash the bootloader. And there it goes. And now what I'm going to do is power it off. Okay, and then we're going to power it back on. Welcome to OpenTX. Throttle warning. Switch warning. Wait, I think I missed the screen here. Let me just check and see what it says real quick. Welcome to OpenTX. Throttle, Throttle warning. warning. Control. Switch warning. Yeah, that's fine. Where's my switches? I think it's this one. There we go. Fail safe. Okay. So if we now go to menu and hold that down and we press page, right? So we're going to go to keep going. And what we want to do is we want to go to our version. What we can see here is that we have version. And I don't know if you can read that, so let me see if I can get that a little bit better. Okay, so you're going to see, uh, there you go. So you've got OpenTX X90 Plus 2019. That's the firmware we loaded. You have the 2.3.0 release candidate 4 loaded. You have the date uh, that, uh, that it was done. And, uh, and everything else looks good. Now, one thing that we do want to do is go to the module options. Because remember, that's something we downloaded from FrySky is we're going to do the ISRM update, right? So the version we have on here is 1.1.0, um, 1.1.2 FCC. And if we go back to the FrySky website, right, that we had here. So let me go back to that page. And let me go back. And we will see that. Uh, let's go back one more. Okay, so this is the X90 Plus where we came to download our, download, to download our updates. 
and this is 1.1.3, so we definitely need that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go, um, uh, we're going to click, keep clicking page if, or exit, and then you can click page. Go back to your firmware screen. Uh, here, let me show you this because I realize it's not on the screen here. So let's do that. Okay, so uh, you're going to get, let's just say we're back at the main screen. You're going to hold the menu down, press page one time, and go to firmware again. And you know what? Let me see if I can dim that screen. Let me go to menu. And let me go here. If I can get this because this is really, really, um, is it going to be my contrast? No. No, that's not gonna help you. So I think they had it at 25. I'll leave it at the default, but that's not what I'm looking for. Where is my, oh, backlight. Okay, so duration, brightness. There, let's just do it like that, right? So we'll leave it at no brightness right now. This way you guys should be able to see it much better. So let's do that, okay? So what I wanna do now is from my home screen, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, press menu, and then I'm gonna press page, and now I'm gonna go to my firmware and I'm gonna to go to my FrySky firmware. And the first thing, we can use one of these two. So I'm gonna go ahead and let me see, based on the release dates, the, IS, uh, the ISRM came out first, so I'm gonna click that, and I'm gonna tell it to go ahead. I'm not very good with this little spinny. Hold it down and just tell it to flash internal module. And there you go. So it's gonna go ahead and start flashing. So we'll give it a second. And remember, guys, if you were trying to flash an external module and you do internal by accident, uh, you could brick it. So just be careful that you do the right one. All right. But in this case, it is internal module. And it says that right there on the screen uh, when you're downloading this uh, update. So we'll wait for that to go. I'm watching the iPad do it right now. And I'm going to try to get my what we have going on today. It is raining outside, so the weather really sucks. My stupid Apple Watch is not doing any better either. Okay, so how are we doing? Oh, this is taking a while. All right, we're gonna let it keep running for a little bit. You know, while that's going, I will just do a few things here. It sure does take a while. I would speed this up, but I'm not gonna. You guys can fast forward with your toggle switch. But, uh, well, I'm just gonna sit here and screw around for a little bit. And then later today, I'm gonna put the video where we add access. Uh, we update the firmware um, to add the new uh, access firmware on the uh, RXSR, and then we can uh, see how that works too. So uh, that shouldn't be a problem. We're just waiting right now for this thing to hurry up. Let me go get that kickstand. I do like these. I'm a sucker for little things like this, little toys, little trinkets that make me feel like I got a cool transmitter. All right. Nope, that's gonna work, it's too small. All right, that firmware's almost done. And once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and do the next one. All right. Okay, so that it just beeped. So it says, okay, flash is successful. Let's hit exit, exit. And we're gonna do it again, menu, page, and go back to firmware. And this time we're gonna go to the FrySky firmware again, and we're gonna do the next one, which was the top one, and we're gonna use the bin file. Okay, so let's go ahead and hold that down. Uh, hmm. see something yeah I hate to this is released before so it could actually put us a step back hold on a second I think that probably applied yeah I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway 
let's see what happens. All right, so once we're done with that, because that's supposed to increase, but I'm wondering if they included that on the OpenTX side, so we'll see. Welcome Let to see. OpenTX. Let's see if we have any errors. Throttle warning. No, looks good. And if I turn this off, I'm going to DFU real quick. Uh, okay, that looks good. So that'll be our update. Everything else looks good. Yeah, looks like we're set now. So we've done our we've done our updates. Welcome to OpenTX. And uh, I believe that Throttle that's pretty warning. much going to take care of it. The only thing is, is what does concern me is, and I've got to check with Frysky on this one, that um, the update came out on the tenth, and then their update came out after. So my guess would be that we can go to menu, press page, go to firmware. Go to uh, OpenTX firmware because this is the one that we did. Hold that down and click Flash Bootloader. All right. Now, I believe that does take care of it. It allows all the updates. So there you go. You're pretty much done at this point. Now, your controller is ready. Um, and if we want to go through the menus, let's look, look and see what we did here, okay? So we'll go page. I'm looking. This is you are page. Page. Page to mixer. Outputs. Curves. Logical switches. Does it say custom scripts, telemetry, and uh, display? All right, good. Uh, and then if I look at the older version, which will be on my QX7. Welcome to it, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's see what we got here. Switch warning. Okay, so we're going to menu, page, page. So I'm going to do page, menu, page. Here, we'll zoom out and see what differences there might be. Let's see what we get. All right, so, okay, we've got model setup, page, flight modes is right, page, page, inputs, mixer, outputs, curves, logical, special, custom scripts, telemetry, display, excellent. And then if we go to menu, hold that down. Okay, I need to set my date and stuff here, but that's fine, but we'll go, uh, let's do page. There's our memory. Okay, so you see right there, global functions is here, but it's not on here, because we had that menu removed. Uh, page, so we went straight to tools here, and then there's global functions there. And then we have trainer, and then we have version, and here's, this is a uh, hardware here, and then we have version. Uh, and then I need to update this one now. And then we have our switches, radio setup, and that's it. Okay, so it looks pretty good. Everything does look good. Very happy with the way this came out. And that's going to basically be how you set it up for part one. All right. Now, after that, we will now get into the second section, which we'll do in a little a video and a little bit on it. I need to go and get this one done. Let me just, uh, oh my gosh, what the hell's going on here? There. There. Oh, look, I don't even know what's going on. Everything's all screwy. Okay, guys, so that's basically the intro. I know it's a long video, but it is a video that kind of is um, supposed to be detailed for you guys on how this works. And uh, I wish I could get the damn thing there. All right, so uh, use this information to kind of help you. I'm going to put this kickstand on here and check out a few other things on here. Uh, it, it is cool. The 32 gig card did work, so that doesn't, that doesn't have a problem. The battery from um, uh, Thunder Power RC worked, so that wasn't a problem either. And everything else seems to be pretty solid. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and play with this radio a little bit, see what we can do. And uh, I'll get back with you with some updates, okay? If you have any questions, hit me up. Please make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube uh, if you can. And if you can also follow us, like us on Facebook. And if you have any questions, hit me up at target cyclonefpv.com. All right, guys, God bless, safe flying, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Bye.
Trim Center.